we worship this evening according to the abbreviated communion service beginning on page 15 in the front of the hymn. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our Old Testament lesson on this New Year's Eve from the fourth book of Moses called Numbers, chapter 9, beginning at verse 15. On the day the tabernacle, the tent of the testimony, was set up, the cloud covered it. From evening till morning, the cloud above the tabernacle looked like fire. That is how it continued to be. The cloud covered it, and at night it looked like fire. Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tent, the Israelites set out. Wherever the cloud settled, the Israelites encamped. At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out, and it, at his command, they encamped. As long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle, they remained in camp. When the cloud remained over the tabernacle a long time, the Israelites obeyed the Lord's order and did not set out. Sometimes the cloud was over the tabernacle only a few days. At the Lord's command, they would encamp, and then at his command, they would set out. Sometimes the cloud stayed only from evening till morning, and when it lifted in the morning, they set out. Whether by day or by night, whenever the cloud lifted, they set out. Whether the cloud stayed over the tabernacle for two days or a month or a year, the Israelites would remain in camp and not set out. But when it lifted, they would set out. At the Lord's command, they encamped, and at the Lord's command, they set out. They obeyed the Lord's order in accordance with his command through Moses. So far, the Old Testament lesson. Our psalm for this evening, these words of Psalm 90, the psalm of Moses. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. So far the psalm for today. And our epistle lesson from the book of James, chapter 4, beginning at verse 13. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast and brag, all such boasting is evil. Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel is written in the seventh chapter according to St. John, beginning at the 37th verse. Glory 
On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture is said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time the Spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let us join in the litany printed in your service folder with the congregation speaking the words in bold type. O Lord, have mercy on us. O Christ, have mercy on us. O Lord, have mercy on us. From all sin, from all error, from all evil. Good Lord, deliver us. From the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation, by thine agony and bloody sweat, by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, us, good Lord. in all time of tribulation, in all time of prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, us, good Lord. we poor sinners do beseech thee to hear us, o Lord God. and to rule and govern thy holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of thy church in the true knowledge and understanding of thy word and in holiness of life, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all such as have erred and are deceived, and to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into thy harvest, to accompany thy word with thy spirit and grace, to raise up them that fall, and to strengthen such as do stand, and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed, to give all nations peace and concord, to preserve our country from discord and contention, to give our nation perpetual victory over all its enemies, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, and to bless and keep our magistrates and all our people. To behold and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. To protect all who travel by land, water, or air. To preserve all women in the perils of childbirth. To strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children. To set free all who are innocently imprisoned. To defend and provide for all fatherless children and widows and to have mercy on all people. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. To give and preserve to our use the fruits of the earth, and graciously hear our prayers. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world. We sing the next hymn.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Our text on this New Year's Eve from the Old Testament lesson which you heard moments ago from the book of Numbers chapter 9. Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tent, the Israelites set out. Wherever the cloud settled, the Israelites encamped. The book of Exodus concludes with a stunning scene of the pillar of cloud and fire hovering over the tabernacle of Israel in the wilderness throughout all their journeys. Whenever they moved, where the cloud moved, they moved. Whenever the cloud stayed put, Israel stayed put. In the ninth chapter of Numbers, we have a much lengthier description of all this. On the day the tabernacle, the tent of the testimony, was set up, the cloud covered it. From evening till morning, the cloud above the tabernacle looked like fire. That is how it continued to be. The cloud covered it, and at night it looked like fire. Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tent, the Israelites set out. Wherever the cloud settled, the Israelites encamped. At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out, and at his command, they encamped. As long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle, they remained in camp. When the cloud remained over the tabernacle a long time, the Israelites obeyed the Lord's order and did not set out. Sometimes the cloud was over the tabernacle only a few days. At the Lord's command, they would encamp. And then at his command, they would set out. Sometimes the cloud stayed only from evening till morning. And when it lifted in the morning, they set out. Whether by day or by night, whenever the cloud lifted, they set out. Whether the cloud stayed over the tabernacle for two days or a month or a year, the Israelites would remain in camp and not set out. But when it lifted, they would set out. At the Lord's command, they encamped. And at the Lord's command, they set out. They obeyed the Lord's order in accordance with his command through Moses. Whatever else one might say about the rebellious, stiff-necked people of God, Israel, in the Old Testament, this is a commendation to them that they followed the pillar of cloud and fire. They followed the leader as though to follow the admonition, Jesus, lead us on. It is no accident that it was at the Feast of Tabernacles that our Lord Jesus took his stand in the midst of the temple courts and he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness but will have the light of life. The Feast of Tabernacles something the kids must have loved. Once a year, all Israel camped outdoors in tents in order to remember their wilderness wanderings where God fed them with manna, quenched their thirst with water from the rock, and led them through the terrible wilderness with a pillar of cloud and fire. Jesus points to himself as that pillar of cloud and fire as the one who leads us through the wilderness of this world. It is no accident either that the great I am statements of Jesus in the Gospel of John point back to these events in the books of Moses. I am the very words with which God describes his covenant name, the Lord. The words he uses to describe his name to Moses at the burning bush. I am who I am. Christ Jesus says before Abraham was born, I am. He points to the manna in the wilderness in the Old Testament. And he says, I am that bread of life which came down from heaven to give life to the world. He points to the rivers of water gushing forth to quench 
the thousands of Israel in the desert. And he says, I am the living water. He points to the fiery, cloudy pillar that led them all their journey through. And he says, I am that light of life. He who follows me will never walk in the darkness. This was not lost on those who rejected Jesus either. Christ Jesus was claiming to be the almighty God himself. They knew exactly what Jesus was saying about himself. He is the Lord God of Israel who delivered his people out of the land of Egypt. He is himself the great I am. Jesus would not put up with any of this casual acquaintance business when it came to our relationship with him. Christ is not an intellectual hors d'oeuvre. He is not simply a philosophy. He is not some sentimental nanny for weddings and funerals. Christ is not an academic subject like math or biology. Christ is not our intellectual plaything. He is the great I am. Those who come to him must believe one thing or the other. Christ is either God himself or he is in fact an egomaniacal false prophet. He left us no third option. He is either God himself or he is a liar. Here says Jesus, remember, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I am that cloud of pillar and fire in the wilderness. The texts of the Old Testament make it plain that it was God the Son, the second person of the Holy Trinity, who inhabited the pillar of cloud and fire in the wilderness, who led them all the way through their journeys for 40 years to the Promised Land. And the Bible makes it clear that so Christ leads you and me also through the uncertainties and the wilderness of our own lives to the Promised Land of Heaven above this Christ does, continuing to be with us on our own journey. He says to us, I will be to you that light in the dark, and I will get you safely home. This is the kindly light which divides all of mankind. As the pillar of cloud and fire divided the Israelites from the Egyptians on the shores of the Red Sea, shrouding the Egyptian army in darkness all through the night and lighting up the way through the parted waters of the Red Sea all through the night that Israel might pass through. So, that pillar of cloud and fire, Christ Jesus, still divides those who reject him and those who by God's grace have been brought to follow his light. As we cross, cross the threshold into another year, the year of our Lord, 2014. The kindly light of Christ still leads us. Still leads us through the darkness of this wilderness to our heavenly home above. Still, as he led ancient Israel, he continues to lead us. The text from the book of Numbers tells us that wherever the pillar of cloud and fire settled, there they settled whether it be for a day, a week, a month, a year. Whenever the pillar of cloud and fire lifted, they followed. So it was. There's an interesting word study here. The text literally tells us, at the mouth of the Lord they moved, and at the mouth of the Lord they settled. 
and that the cloud, a pillar and fire, stayed over the tabernacle, literally rested upon it. The Hebrew word that has come into English from this is called the Shekinah, the presence, the resting of God himself, God's own dwelling. It's the very word that also is then used to picture the tabernacle, the place of God's resting, his presence. The New Testament says Jesus, tabernacle among us, his presence with us. The book of Revelation tells us that in heaven Christ spreads his tent over us. His so-called parousia, his coming, his presence at the end of time. This too is portrayed in the Bible as Christ living among his own. The lamb at the center of the throne will be our shepherd. Here in Old Testament Israel, the people of God would stop and start all at the direction of the pillar of cloud and fire. Sometimes they might sit in a place away from shade, away from palm trees, away from wells of water, mid fiery serpents, or open to their enemies. No matter, cloud stayed put, they stayed put. Sometimes the days might become dull and boring and they were itching to go somewhere. Cloud stayed put over the tabernacle, they stayed put. And when the pillar of cloud and fire lifted from above the tabernacle, even if they were weary and foot sore and they just got there, up came the tent pegs and off they go, following the pillar of cloud and fire. Jesus, lead us on. So Christ continues to do with you and me too. Sometimes we find ourselves brooding over where we are at in life. Where all these things are taking us in life. Whether it be the past year or what we think might be coming this year. And perhaps if things have been going well for you lately, getting comfortable around the campfire, and you say, I, I kind of like where I am, and I don't want anything to change, and I want things to be just this way. But then we fear to move on, to follow the kindly, gentle leading of Christ, who leads and draws and guides and does not push nor drive nor oppress. At other times, perhaps, if we have suffered pain or loss in the past year, we're anxious to move on. We wonder when the bad times are going to leave and the good times are going to start and the pillar is going to lift up and going to lead us to a better day. And God says, no, you be patient. I am with you. Which is why in the Old Testament, the pillar of cloud and fire is called something else. God calls it his presence. Literally, his face. His being there. When days are good, when you're laughing and all the jokes are funny, you like to have somebody with you, don't you? To laugh with you, to share the joke, not to be alone. And when times are hard, you're sad, discouraged, disappointed, sick, you need somebody with you. Not necessarily even to say anything. You just need somebody's presence, someone's face, someone to camp right there with you. This is what we yearn for. Here we are in the wilderness of this world. Who will take our hand when it's dark, when it's night, and we're far from home? Jesus, Jesus, only Jesus. Remember what he said? I am with you always to the end of the world. What does the Bible say 
about Joseph, sold into slavery by his brethren, languishing in a dungeon. The simple phrase, the Lord was with Joseph. What does the Bible say that God said to Moses when he sent him off to perform the impossible task of leading God's people out of bondage? The Lord said, I will be with you. What did the sweet psalmist of Israel, King David, say about his Savior, the Good Shepherd? <coughs> Thou art with me. What did God say through the prophet Isaiah? When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. The kindly light always camping with us, always leading us forth. The fiery pillar shining bright in the night. But what about Christ himself? You remember, don't you? He goes into the shadows of Gethsemane. He pleads with the disciples. Watch with me. They couldn't. He fell sound asleep. Christ, all alone, wrestling with the hard will of the Father. You and I, no, never alone. Christ, alone. What did Christ call out from the cross? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? All alone. I have trodden the winepress alone, he said in the prophet Isaiah, and there was no one with me. You and I, never alone. Always the kindly light leading us forth in the night. Because Christ lived and died and rose again, you and I will never be alone. The cloudy, fiery, is always with us. The pillar of cloud and fire hovered over the tabernacle and led Israel through the wilderness for 40 years. You think some days they got up and didn't notice it anymore? Do you think that perhaps they stopped marveling at it and being amazed by it. Still he goes before us in the word, the water, and the blood, in the waters of baptism, in the preaching of the word, in the body and blood of the sacrament. Do you think it's possible that we can get up some mornings and not notice it and no longer marvel at it and no longer be amazed at it. Jesus, lead us on. Jesus, help us amid the night to remember that you are the fiery, cloudy pillar to lead me all my journey through. Let us follow the leader. Lead kindly light amid the encircling gloom. The night is dark, and I am far from home. Lead thou me on. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.
Let us offer up our prayers this evening for Rodney Berg, for whom the departure from this life seems near. Eternal Father, you alone make the decisions of life and death. We implore your mercy on behalf of Rodney Berg, whose departure from this life seems near at hand. As he passes through the valley of the shadow of death, comfort him with faith's assurance that you are with him, that he need not be overcome by fear. Spare him extreme pain. Encourage him and his loved ones with the sure hope of the glory that you have prepared for your believers in heaven. Into your hands we commit him, O Lord, our Redeemer. Amen. We also pray, Lord God, Heavenly Father, from whom cometh down every good and perfect gift. We thank thee that in the past year thou hast granted unto us thy gracious protection, given us health and daily bread, crowned us with thy blessing, and defended thy holy Christian church from harm and danger. And we beseech thee, let us in a manner acceptable to thee, conclude the old year and enter upon the new, in which thou wouldst be pleased to dwell among us continually with thy goodness. For the sake of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the communion portion of the service, beginning on the top of page 23 in the front of the hymnal. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
depart in peace. Amen.
Let us pray. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this Holy Supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.